Welcome to Adventure Sphere. Travis Lamont Lynch, then 21, is missing from Middlesex, North Carolina. His last date of contact was Wednesday, December 24th, 2003, Christmas Eve. This was before cell phones could be pinged. Prior to disappearing, earlier in the day, he purchased his white 1992 Pontiac Grand Am North Carolina license plates RZS. Four one, I'm sorry, four eight one four. Later, he went to get Christmas presents and see his girlfriend. That evening, they went to the Twilight Zone nightclub in the vicinity of eight zero six seven Stony Hill Church Road in Bailey, North Carolina. This was the last public sighting of him. He was drinking there, so he allegedly drove about five miles to his girlfriend's home to sober up. He left there around 1 a.m. Carlisha lived on Claude Lewis Road in Middlesex at the time, and it was about a 22-minute drive from her home to his home in Wilson, North Carolina. At 1 a.m., the temperature was 57 degrees Fahrenheit, and there was no precipitation, so the roads should have been safe weather-wise. The Nash County Sheriff's Office is investigating. They can be reached at 252-459-4121. Travis was to call Carlisha when he got home. The call never came, so Carlisha called Travis's mom, Jackie, to verify his arrival. That was the only time Carlisha ever called her, never before or since. Travis's family went to her home to get more information, but they were not invited in. Four months after Travis vanished, a mobile home that belonged to Carlisha's uncle was uh, they caught fire twice within three days. They noted that there is, was no electricity to the home at the time. I don't know if it was in the process of being built or if it got cut off. I, I don't know any more about that. Uh, but his home was within eyesight of that Twilight Zone nightclub that they were at earlier in the day. The fire occurred April 23rd, 2004, but it didn't completely burn down. The second fire was a few days later, did destroy the home. Investigators believe the fires were suspicious, but stopped short of ruling them as arson. They think the fires may have been related to Travis's disappearance. Welcome to Adventure Sphere. This channel is dedicated to missing people who are missing with a vehicle. In the process of creating this database, we are creating a volunteer sonar search and recovery dive team. Our services are free of charge. We ask you to consider subscribing, watch our content, and help spread awareness of our endeavor. The places I'll mention here in a minute are shared with my blessing so Travis can be reunited with his family, regardless who higher powers work through. The description box has your email address. If you'd like to share insight on any cold case, know someone missing with a vehicle and would like them featured on our channel and searched for, or to donate equipment. The video of Google Earth has a measurement from our current best starting location, point and goes out to possible search areas. We focus on bodies of water within five miles of their last known location and within five miles of their destination. Sentimental sites can also be sonared. If an area has been heavily searched, we may expand the search area, but please keep in mind that accidents tend to happen closer to home. For this purpose, I believe I'm using the Stony Road address because it's we know that he was at the nightclub there, the Twilight Zone, and the uncle was just, it was with an eyesight, his home of the bar. So there are varying views as to Travis's personality. A mentor, interestingly, described him as having a colorful personality and was a typical teenager in two girls in music when he was in ninth grade. What's cool about that situation is that the person was a resource officer at the school and was mentored by one of Travis's uncle, who is now a retired state trooper. 
Others said Travis had a violent temper and think that Travis may have been in a physical altercation with someone that resulted in his death. His girlfriend is believed to be the last person to see him alive in 2003. Travis's family was proactive for a number of years, posting flyers, walking neighborhoods, combing the woods, and offering rewards for information. I think it's up to 35000 now. Um, let's see here, coming information. So Travis's mother describes him as quiet and easygoing and never got into trouble for drugs. She pointed it out, I think, because some people he was associated with were in the drug scene, but he wasn't. A newspaper article on April 20th of 2020 stated Travis may have never made it to his girlfriend's home or that he tried to drive home the night he vanished. The only evidence investigators have that Travis tried to drive home was Carlicia's statement. Uh, deputies have dragged water bodies, searched junkyards, and used sophisticated equipment borrowed from other agencies to check underground for his vehicle or him, maybe both. Another theory that they have is that after he was killed, he was loaded into his vehicle, driven to a junkyard where his car was compacted into a metal cube, which was disposed of in the metal sex area. At the time he disappeared, his girlfriend's family knew a junkyard operator who has since passed away. Uh, some questions that I had was, did he work, go to school or both? What was his schedule like and what was the address of the locations? I'm thinking if he may have just gone home directly after leaving the nightclub, you might have gotten confused thinking he had to go to work or to school. Does he have any children? What were the custody arrangements like? Did he give any possessions away in the months and weeks before he disappeared? Does he prefer to drive on main roads or back roads? Was there any road construction happening that would have had detours that took him onto unfamiliar roads? If that happened, plus the drinking, he might have driven into a body of water and had gotten confused. Also, it's possible that he may have hit a deer or something, some large animal on the road and lost control of the car or swerved to avoid hitting an animal? Did he place a call to AAA or roadside assistance that evening after um, leaving the Twilight Zone nightclub? Were there any items that he always carried? A water bottle, snack, a knife, a gun, a lighter? I am curious about the knife and the gun for self-defense purposes, if he did have one in his car and were able to recover his vehicle, I want to make very sure that we are thorough about looking at the water bottom, the river bottom, lake bottom, to retrieve the weapon so it doesn't fall into somebody else's hand who shouldn't have it. We would give it to the investigators and then they would either keep it for evidence or give it back to the family if they desire it does he have any health issues is he diabetic does he have asthma anything like that uh, vision problems does he wear glasses or contacts and then what was the last place of his financial transaction last financial transaction the place date and time as it stands now, I would like to look at Morgan's Pond. There's a quarry about four and a half miles away. That could be very possible. There's different color water bodies there. One is a bright blue that would, I think, hide his, ve his white vehicle very easily there. And then there's also another body of water on the property that looks pretty deep and it has a darker blue hue to it. We need to get a, a permission to search there. There's also Marsh Swamp. My primary contender, I believe, is the Buckhorn Reservoir. Then there's Bun Lake. That could be possible. There's a bridge for Highway 64 over it. It is eight miles out, but it's possible. 
Then the next biggest reservoir is Falls Lake, and that's about 40 miles away. So it's one of the later ones I'd like to look at if I have to. Then there's, in Wilson, there's Toysonot Reservoir. Toynot Reservoir. Uh, Lake Wilson. Silver Lake. Then there's a lake 11 miles away on Interstate 587. That could be possible. And then I know there's one... Sonar Searcher, who scanned Wiggins Mill Reservoir. I think he's new to it. I'm not sure. I haven't talked to him yet. Um, but if we can't find him in the Middlesex Bailey area, then I'd like to look at the Wiggins Mill Reservoir and double check it. If you'd like to help Travis's family find him, please subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and ring the notification bell to receive progress reports. I'll let the video play out here for a little bit so you can see the entire search area. If you see something I missed, please let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Remember, we love you and Happy New Year. <laughs>